Okay, I'm going to do a quick synopsis of the book of Revelation. This is going to go probably long, but get your Bible out and, and follow along with the scriptures. The interpretation of, of, of uh, the book of Revelation that we hear today in the church is all leaven of the Pharisees. They say the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist. That's a lie. They say that the rapture, they talk about pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation rapture. When the word tribulation isn't even in the Bible, okay? So, <laughs> leaven of the Pharisees. I'm just saying, there's a lot of false, and what is the leaven of the Pharisees? The false teaching that works through the whole batch of dough. It works through the whole church. The leaven of the Pharisees is any teaching that's a false teaching in the church or in the body of Christ that's so prevalent and so pervasive that everybody's teaching the same thing that it starts to appear to be the truth when it's a false teaching. Okay? But when I got saved, I got saved by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Nobody witnessed to me. I didn't even have a Christian friend. I didn't even have a Bible. And then the Holy Spirit led me to a book and back then, I was like a loser. I never read. I was a high school student. I never read a book in my life. And yet, uh, the one book I chose, uh, right after I, I came to believe in God, told me that I needed to read the Bible. And basically, the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, saved me. And by the Holy Spirit, led me to Jesus. And by the Holy Spirit, led me to the Holy Bible. So if Islam was the way then God would have led me to Islam. But God led me to Jesus because Jesus is the way, he's the truth and the life. And in the same way the Lord revealed the book of Revelation to me, and this is the right teaching, if you pray about it, the Holy Spirit will confirm this. Now I'm going to start with the seven seals. Okay, the seven seals leads into the seven trumpets. And then there are seven angels that lead into the seven bowls of God's wrath. The first seal. Okay, are you ready? The white horse. This happened in 1492 when Christopher Columbus discovered the New World. Spain, Portugal, the Dutch, and France, and Great Britain sent out conquerors bent on conquest to conquer the new world. That's why we speak English in North America, because the Brits conquered North America, and that's why they speak Spanish in South America, because the Spaniards conquered South America. Okay, If you read about Cortez, they named a sea out of, uh, 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 after him. The Sea of Cortez. Who's Cortez? He was a Spaniard. Where did he come from? He came from Spain. Why? Because he was given the authority of the royal crown and he was given ships with a bow on it. All ships have a bow, bow, okay? And back then they carried bows and they would put horses on the ships, okay? Cortez conquered all of Mexico with like a handful of guys, like a dozen guys went into, um, went into Mexico and they took over. The conquerors, bent on conquest, rode out from Spain, Portugal, Great Britain, and uh, Denmark, and conquered the world, okay? So the first seal starts in 1492 and is fulfilled by 1492. Also, with after, right behind those conquerors, bent on conquest, were missionaries and... Um, you know, the United States was founded by who? Christians who migrated to North America to, for, for religious freedom reasons. Okay, so the first seal is marked in time by 1492, the age of imperialism. Then there were wars. After the discovery of the New World, Spain had wars with France, had wars with Great Britain, had wars with France and... and uh, and Great Britain had wars over who was going to control the New World. Then, once the world map was established, now before 1492, there was no such thing as a world map. But after 1492, the New World was discovered, conquered, 
and then there were wars over the New World, okay, then, before World War I, was the first time that the world map was established and there was world peace. Then, the second seal is World War I, okay? The Fiery Red Horse. Also, World War I was the first war that they used fiery machine guns and they dropped bombs from aircraft, okay? So that's why he says a fiery red horse. World War I fulfills the second seal, and the second seal is fulfilled by World War I. What happened after World War I? The Great Depression. Guess what? The third seal speaks of the Great Depression, the Black Horse, economic depression. The third seal is the economic depression. The fourth seal. What happened after uh, the Great Depression? World War II. The fourth seal is World War II. And if you measure population, now let's read the fourth seal real quick because it's important. Um, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice, uh, the fourth living seal, a creature said, come. And I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Other versions say gray, a gray horse. It's important. Its rider was named Death and Hades, and fo followed, and they were given. Its rider was named Death and, and Hades, was following close behind, and they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and by wild beasts of the earth. Listen, World War II, one fourth of all mankind died. If you measure population the way they measure it in the Bible, in the Old Testament they measured population by only counting men of fighting age and in the new testament when they talked about the meetings of jesus they said five thousand men not including women and children so even in the new testament they measured population by only counting adult men well guess what during world war ii one quarter of adult men of the population of the earth of adult men was decimated and that's a fact. That's a statistical fact, especially if you count the population of Russian men, because Russia took a huge hit. A huge, millions of men died in World War One. I. I mean, in World War Two, and it was one quarter of all mankind. World War Two fulfills the fourth seal. Now, the gray horse, the pale horse, death and Hades. The Lord spoke to me and told me that's that represents the Holocaust. And um, it's a gray horse. If you look at the old black and white pictures of the um, of the Holocaust, you'll see death and Hades in gray scale. It's all black and white pictures. The fourth seal fulfills is fulfilled by World War II. And if you can't consider that the first, second, third, and fourth seal all go in sequence. And the age of imperialism, the conquerors bent on conquest, and then World War One, and then the Great Depression, and then World War Two. You see, they all go in. Now, this is the right interpretation of the of the seals, and the reason I know this is the Lord told me this. And anybody who comes up with anything else is teaching false teaching and the leaven of the Pharisees. Okay, and the reason the Lord showed me this is I took a. It was only one class at the university. I never watched Christian TV. I didn't even know there was such thing as Christian TV. And I was reading the book of Revelation. I asked, I told God, I can't understand this unless you reveal it to me. And I took, and I just happened to take one class that fulfilled three requirements to graduate. It was the only class that fit my schedule, was upper division course, and fulfilled my arts and letters requirement. And so I had to take this class. And this is where I learned about the history of the age of imperialism, World War One, World War Two, the Great Depression, the whole sequence of events, and um, I'm telling you, this is the right interpretation. Okay, now the 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 fifth seal happened around 2014 when ISIS rose up and started beheading everybody in Iraq. Okay, remember J uh, James Foley being beheaded? That was about the time when the fifth seal happened. The sixth seal is yet to come. The sixth seal is World War III. 
okay? The sky rolled up like a scroll as a mushroom cloud. The stars falling from the sky, um, those are nuclear, uh, nuclear strike, okay? And everybody hiding in the dens of the rocks and the caves of the mountains, that's everybody is hiding in, and it's the leaders the, and the military generals are hiding in the dens of the rocks. Those are fallout shelters and bomb shelters. Okay, so the sixth seal is yet to come, but we see the sixth seal is uh, very close. World War Three, World War Three lasts one hour. The sixth seal lasts one hour. It's the hour of God's judgment. Revelation chapter fourteen, verse six or seven. The hour of trial to come upon the whole earth. Revelation three ten. The hour that Babylon the Great falls. That's Revelation fourteen, verse seven and eight. And it's also the hour uh, in Revelation chapter 18. It says, in one hour, Babylon the Great Falls. In one hour, she's burned with fire. In one hour. Okay? And then it's also the hour that the beast comes to power. Now, the beast has seven heads and ten horns. That's seven nations with ten leaders. The beast, the government and regime of the Antichrist, comes to power in one hour. And it says that in Revelation chapter 17 Verse 12, it says the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but in one hour, they step into kings, to being kings. So that's the hour of God's judgment. That's World War Three, And a nuclear strike, the first strike would, would take about ten minutes with these new hypersonic missiles. And when you consider the submarine-launched missiles that are right offshore... And even the ground-based missiles being launched from the interior of the United States have about a 20-minute flight time from the interior of the United States to the interior of Russia. That means there could be three or four, possibly five volleys of nuclear strike in one hour. The hour of God's judgment and the sixth seal is the hour that Babylon the Great falls. This is the right interpretation. You can disagree, but if you pray about it, the Holy Spirit will confirm it. Now, the six seals lead into the, uh, or the seven seals lead into the seven trumpets. The seventh seal begins the trumpets. Okay, the um, the trumpets represent the wrath of God. The rapture happens after World War Three, after the mark of the beast comes out, but before God pours His wrath out on the earth. Okay, that's why I don't like to say pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. It's a bunch of balderdash, leaven of the Pharisees foolishness jargon that a bunch of scholars who are too brainiac and don't have enough holy ghost in their heart or any holy ghost at all some of the people who come up with a lot of the teaching on the book of revelation if you were to ask them they say god doesn't speak today well then how are you going to stand here and tell me you know the interpretation of what the book of revelation is i'm just saying okay so Hey, not bad. Only 13 minutes so far. Now, the seven seals lead into the seven trumpets. Once you get to the seventh trumpet, so the seventh trumpet happens and the sequence of events ends at the end of Revelation chapter 11. The seventh trumpet is at uh, Revelation eleven fifteen, And when that seventh trumpet sounds, that's the end of the age. And so the sequence of events ends. So the six seals, or the seven seals begin in Revelation chapter 6 and end at the end of Revelation chapter 11. That's a sequence of events. The rapture is found in Revelation, in that sequence of events, Revelation 7, 9 is where the rapture is. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude no one could count from every nation, tribe, language, and people. This is in heaven. They were wearing white robes, and they were basically they were in, in heaven. So the seventh seal, after the 144,000 are sealed with the seal of God, the rapture happens, okay? Now, the, the 144,000 are left behind. People talk about the Left Behind series and all that. There's 144,000 guys who are left behind with the seal of God on their forehead. Revelation chapter 9 proves it. 
Um, in Revelation chapter 9, verse 4, 5, and 6, get your Bible out. God releases part of his wrath on the earth. He releases locusts with the sting of a scorpion. And they're commanded to attack only the people who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. So, and they're commanded not to attack any grass or any green thing. So I'll read it real quick. Okay, so the locusts with the sting of a scorpion were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their forehead. So this proves that the 144,000 are in the earth when God is pouring out his wrath, but they're protected from the wrath of God. Those scorpion stings are not going to attack them, but everyone else on the face of the planet is coming under attack by swarms of locusts with the sting of a scorpion. So this is proof that one, the 144,000 are in the earth at that time, and two, they're walking in supernatural protection from God, and three, that God is pouring out his wrath on the inhabitants of the earth, but the 144,000 are immune to that wrath. Okay? And we see that one of the judgments, this particular judgment lasts five months, and we see another judgment lasts three and a half days, three and a half days of darkness. Okay? So, it goes like this. World War III, then the Mark of the Beast comes out. Then after the Mark of the Beast comes out, the foolish virgins fall away from the faith. When the last foolish virgin falls away from the faith, the bridegroom comes. Okay, that's the rapture. And then um, then the 144,000 are left behind. God is pouring out his wrath on the earth, but the 144,000 are immune to the wrath of God. That's all I'm going to say about that sequence of events. That sequence of events ends in Revelation chapter 11, okay, with flashes of lightning, rumblings, <clears throat> peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. <clears throat> we see that same event with the last bowl of God's wrath in Revelation chapter seven, 16 or 17. The end of Revelation chapter 16. So I'll go there real quick. So the, the seventh trumpet happens at the same event, and here's how it happens. The angel sounds a trumpet, and then God pours out. So the seventh trumpet, when that angel sounds that trumpet, the other angel pours out the seventh bowl of God's wrath. So let's go to Revelation chapter 16. What happens when the seventh bowl of God's wrath is poured out? Revelation chapter 16, verse 19 through 20. It says there's an earthquake, there's rumblings, great hailstorm. The same thing that happens in Revelation chapter 11 verse 19 also happens in Revelation chapter 16 verse 20 through 21. They're the same event, okay? The, the angel sounds a trumpet, the seventh trumpet, bah, 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 and the seventh bowl of God's wrath is then poured out. So, that sequence of events starts in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, with the angel of the gospel. So it goes the angel of the gospel, and then Revela Revelation 14, 8, a second angel followed. That indicates a sequence of events. It says, and then Revelation 14, 9, a third angel followed. Okay, so the first angel, so there's seven seals that lead into the seven trumpets and then there's seven angels that lead into the seven bowls of God's wrath okay now i've already explained the relationship between the trumpets and the bowls the angel sounds a trumpet and then the other angel pours out the bowl so they're one and the same or they're happening at least at the same time so, back to Revelation 14. The first angel is the angel of the gospel. And he gets the gospel out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. And then he steps off the scene, and the last thing he says is, Worship God, for the hour of his judgment has come. The hour of God's judgment. Remember I said that's the sixth seal? That's World War III. Okay? The second angel followed. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Okay, remember? Babylon the Great falls in World War III. 
A third angel followed. If anyone worships the beast, this is the third angel. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark there on their forehead or hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength in the cup of his wrath. In other words, after Babylon the Great falls, after the hour of God's judgment and Babylon the Great falls, the mark of the beast comes out. And we see in Revelation chapter 17, verse 12, the beast, the government and regime of the Antichrist, comes to power in one hour. That's the hour of God's judgment. Then, after the mark of the beast comes out, just go to Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6. You'll see that in uh, verse 12, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God. In other words, those of us who serve God, after World War III comes out, the mark of the beast is going to happen. After World War III happens, the mark of the beast is going to come out. Okay? Now, there's a verse in the Bible where it says that... Um, that him who is holding back the lawlessness or something. What's holding back? Okay, the, the government of the Antichrist is Russia and China. And I'll go over that in a minute. when I There's another sequence of events. But let's stick to the seven angels that lead into the seven bowls of God's wrath. Okay, so Revelation chapter 14. <clears throat> the first three angels. The first one is the angel of the gospel. That's doing his work for 2,000 years from the day of Pentecost up until today. Then when Babylon the Great falls, that's when the angel of the gospel steps off the scene. Then the second angel says, fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. That's the sixth seal. That's World War III. Babylon the Great is America. Then the third seal angel, I'm sorry, the, the, the third angel comes out and says, beware of the mark of the beast. And this calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God and those who remain faithful to Jesus. Then, after the mark of the beast comes out, there's going to be a prophetic word that comes forth. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on, or blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, is another version of the Bible. Okay, so after the mark of the beast comes out, there's a special blessing for those who die in the Lord. Okay, now where's the rapture? The angel... Four, five, six, and seven in this sequence of events are the rapture, okay? The harvest of the earth. Jesus calls it the harvest at the end of the age. In order to understand Revelation 14, 14 through 14, 20, you need to read Matthew chapter 13, verse 39 through 41, I believe it is, where Jesus talks about how the harvest at the end of the age, the field is the earth, the one who sowed the good seed was the son of man. The enemy who sowed the bad seed into the field was, was the devil. And the harvesters were the angels. Well, we see the harvest happens in Revelation 14, verse 14 through 20. That's the rapture. And the only difference is in Revelation uh, 14, 20 and 14, uh, 18, where we see the clusters of grapes. The clusters of grapes represent the weeds among the wheat. Okay. Jesus said, I am the vine. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. But who are the grapes? The grapes are the lukewarm, foolish virgins, disobedient Christians. Okay. Then Revelation chapter 15 goes on to, we see uh, uh, the, the people in heaven who have been victorious over the beast and its image. That's Revelation 15, 1, 2, and 3. And then we see God pouring out the bowls of his wrath. Okay, and you can go through all that. You can read through it. And that sequence of events ends in Revelation chapter 16, verse 21, I believe. Now, there's another sequence of events. Revelation 12 and 13. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. This is the bride of Christ. Jesus is the sun. Remember the Bible talks about how Jesus appears and he's in the radiance of the sun. The bride of Christ is clothed with Jesus. As a servant of God, I can tell you right now, I am clothed. The Lord is my clothing. I wear him. He is wrapped around me and I'm wrapped around him like a candy cane. You know how a candy cane is all swirled? Okay, I'm that little colored part. 
and he's that white part, and we're swirled together. Okay, and if you love the Lord and you're the bride of Christ, then you are part of that. You're clothed with the sun. But another sign appeared, and that's the enormous red dragon. Now, we know the dragon represents the devil, but in this context it represents China because it says with seven heads and ten horns. Whenever you see seven heads and ten horns, that means the government and regime of the Antichrist. And I'll prove that real quick. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 17, verse 12, because it's important you understand this. Um, the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received... Now, it's talking about the ten horns on the beast. I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns. And now, God is explaining to John what those ten horns are. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not received a kingdom, but who in one hour, that's the hour of God's judgment, World War III, the sixth seal, who in one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. In other words, Jinping, Putin, the Ayatollah of Iran, Kim Jong-un, these are the horns. These are kings who will receive in one hour when World War III happens, when that nuclear exchange happens, the sixth seal and the sky is rolled up like a scroll. That's a nuclear mushroom cloud. And when that happens, World War III lasts one hour, Babylon the Great falls in one hour, and guess who comes into ruling the whole earth? Putin, Kim Jong-un, Jinping of China, the Ayatollah possibly of Iran if, he's, if he survives World War III, and... Six other rulers come to power in one hour. One of them, I believe, to be Obama. I believe Obama is the Antichrist. I don't know if for sure. Um, but I believe he'll be back. There were many prophecies that Obama will be back. Okay? So, back to Revelation chapter 12. Then this enormous red dragon, that's China... From its tail, send stars from the sky to the earth. Whenever you see stars falling from the sky to the earth, multiple, that represents World War III. That's why in the Re in uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, the sixth seal has stars falling from the sky to the earth. And Jesus said, the stars will fall from the sky and then the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man. It's not the coming of the Son of Man. It's the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man. And that is the mushroom clouds. When you see a mushroom cloud, okay, that's the sky being rolled up like a scroll, and that's also the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man. It's not the coming of the Son of Man. The sign always indicates something that's coming up later. When you're driving to Sacramento, you will see a sign that says Sacramento, 75 miles. The sign is not Sacramento, but it goes before, in, in, in the same way that the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man is not the coming of the Son of Man. It's the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man. And that's the mushroom clouds, the sky rolled up like a scroll. Lord, help me to get all this condensed into one. You're going to have to do your study and prayer about what I'm saying. If you pray about what I'm saying, I'm listen, I'm the Elijah. I'm setting this straight. I'm setting everything straight. Okay? And this is going to go down, not in this world, but for eternity. Y'all are going to know. Y'all are going to know in eternity that this is that this is the right interpretation. I'm just saying. I may only get 100 views on this YouTube video. But eternally they'll know that I'm telling the truth. I'm telling you, I'm going down in history as the Elijah. <laughs> You'll find out. You'll find out. <laughs> and not Elijah. I'm not saying I'm Elijah. I'm saying I'm John the Baptist. I'm carrying the mantle of John the Baptist. Let's say it that way. Johnny, Johnny boy. All right. And just so you know, the mantle on Daniel rests on John when he wrote the book of, okay, Zechariah. Okay, the mantle of Joseph later rested on Daniel, later rested on Zechariah, later rested on John the Apostle. The mantle that was on Elijah later rested on Elisha and then later rested on John the Baptist and eventually someday I'm going to step into that mantle. I may have it now. I don't know. 
We'll see. I gotta go per vita. I gotta walk away from everything. Like Jesus said to the rich young ruler, there's one thing you lack. Go sell everything you have. Walk away from everything. What did he say? He said, he said to the rich young ruler, there's one thing you lack. If you want to be perfect or complete, go sell everything you have. Then you'll have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And Jesus did that. Paul did it. John did it. Elisha did it. Elijah did it. All these apostles walked away from everything and followed Jesus. There's a verse in the Bible where it says Levi left everything to follow Jesus. Peter said, Lord, we left everything to follow you. Uh, there's another verse where it says the disciples met Jesus and they walked away from their boat. They had a shipping boat for uh, fishing and they walked away from everything. I'm just saying. And I mean everything. Even Jesus said when he talked about raising the dead in Matthew 10 verse 9, the very next verse, he says, go out, raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. He says, take no money. Don't even take a backpack or a baggage. Don't take a, an extra shirt. He said everything. Walk away from everything. In other words, you'll be walking around after two days. You'll be smelling because you won't have any deodorant. You're going to have bad breath because you don't have a toothbrush. All you have is the clothes you are wearing. And you walk away. And I've done it. And when I did it, I started having visions and revelation. And I started seeing and prophesying. I didn't have any miracles. I didn't even think to have miracles. And now I'm believing God for miracles. Next time I walk away from everything, I'm going to have miracles. I'm going to raise the dead. You'll see. Not me. The Lord will speak through me. And that I know. I've done that before. It's, it's really easy. It's faith as a mustard seed. All you do is say, yes, Lord, I'll speak this word. And then you speak it. Lazarus, come out. Silver and gold have I not. But what I do have, I give to you. Rise and walk. That was a prophetic word when Pe Peter spoke that. I'm just saying, it was prophecy. It's as easy as just allowing the Holy Spirit to use you. But you have to walk away from everything. You have to be in that place of pura vida, is what I call it. Pure life. No distractions. No iPhone. No talking. No Facebook. No watching TV. No YouTube. None of that. It's all, you walk away from all of it. No brand name, Nike shoes, nothing. All right. Back to Revelation chapter um, uh, 12. So Revelation chapter 12 and 13 is another sequence of events where we see the enormous red dragon, stars falling from, the, from its tail from the sky to the earth. Now the dragon also represents the devil, but whenever you see it says with seven heads and ten horns, that means the government of the Antichrist, the beast. Now the Antichrist is a person, the government and regime of the Antichrist and the armies of the Antichrist are the beast. Now Revelation chapter 13. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea. Now, that is referring to China. China is limited, can't attack or take America out because of that sea. And Revelation 13 really should start at the next sentence. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns with seven heads and ten crowns on its horn. Remember those ten crowns? Those are the ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, Revelation 17, 12. But in one hour they receive, by here, by the time, by the time that beast comes rising out of the sea, those kings have crowns. If you read Revelation chapter 12, you'll see there's only seven crowns. But in Revelation chapter 13, it has ten crowns. That means that they have really fully come to fruition of kings over all the earth. And look, it says, um, it had feet like those of a bear. That's Russia. The dragon gave the beast its power. The dragon is China. The power it gives is economic power. I've proven that. I prophesied that many years ago. And it's come to pass. Even Turkey being part of the beast. Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, and Turkey. Um, but the two main, main players are the bear and the dragon. Okay. Um, then it talks about, um, the beast coming out of the earth, Revelation chapter 11, uh, 13, 11, 
The second beast coming out of the earth is represents Islam. And the reason it represents it has two horns like a lamb. Two of the leaders of the beast system are going to be Muslims. Okay? And they're like a lamb. So it's like Christianity. Remember how Islam is kind of a Christian religion. Wants to claim Christianity. <clears throat> but it speaks like a dragon. It's a lying dragon. And it comes rising out of the earth. Okay, the beast rising out of the sea in Revelation 13 means that the beast, the government of the Antichrist, has a navy. Okay, that's Russia and China. You're going to see Russian and Chinese ships and Russian infantry coming up out of the sea. And from sea level, any direction you go is rising up out of the sea. Okay. If you're standing on the shore of the sea, anywhere you go is going to be up in elevation. So Revelation 13 speaks of Russia and China invading Babylon the Great. And then out of the earth, a second beast, Revelation chapter 13, 11, speaks of part of the Antichrist system and the beast is already in America. That's your Muslims and your unbelievers who are going to quickly convert to being part of the government and regime of the Antichrist. Okay? And it talks about performing great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to to earth in full view of people. That's nuke that's nukes, folks. That is firepower from war. A lot of people think it's gonna be some guy conjuring up some miracle. No, it's a sign. It doesn't say great signs. It says a great sign. It doesn't say miracles. It says the beast is uh Revelation thirteen thirteen. It performed great signs even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth. That is a bombing raid. That is nukes coming down. Okay, when the beast, the government of the Antichrist, is Russia and China, they will have fireworks called bombs. And that will be fulfilled. That will fulfill Revelation 13, 13. The inhabitants of the earth are ordered to set up an image. You know, they're forced to set, they're ordered they are forced to set up an image of the beast. Now the image, this, just so you know, is they're going to have a bunch of TV screens. And you're going to see these government leaders. And you're going to have to bow down and, and show respect and listen to everything that Putin has to say when he comes on TV. That's what these, um, where it says... Um, uh, that they were ordered to, uh, it ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast. When it says they set up an image in honor, that's TV screens. That's video monitors. The same way you're watching me. Now, the beast that was, uh, who was uh, wounded by the sword and yet lived, that's, that's Russia. The Bible talks about um, one of the parts of the beast, how it seemed like it was dead. Um, and the fatal wound had been healed. Remember, Russia disappeared. It used to be the Soviet Union. And then in 1989, we know that history was, uh, you know, the Soviet Union, the Iron Curtain fell. And it seemed like Russia or, or the Soviet Union was dismantled. But Russia has come back and is now the bear. Part of the uh, be, uh, mark of... And then, look, after World War III, after the beast rises out of the sea, they set up an image that everybody has to worship. This is after they're causing fire to come down from heaven. Okay? This is after the stars fall from the sky. Revelation 13, 15. <clears throat> uh, they give uh, breath to the image of the first beast. Now, when I said that those are video monitors, okay... And then, verse 16, the mark of the beast comes out. Revelation 13, 16. So, here's the sequence of events from Revelation chapter 12 and 13. Russia, China's going to launch nukes from the sky to the earth. Those are the stars from the sky to the earth. Then, Russia and China are going to come rising out of the sea. Then, at the same, around that time, uh, um, Islam is also going to come rising up out of the earth. Meaning, they're already here. Then um, they're going to set up, they're going to cause fire to come down from heaven. Okay, that's bombs. 
They're going to be bombing us even after World War, after the nukes fly, they're still going to come through with fire down from heaven. Then they're going to set up a bunch of TV monitors that are living images that it, it says it was given power to give breath to the image of the beast. In other words, the image of the beast seemed to come alive. And then the mark of the beast is going to come out. Okay. And then Revelation chapter 14 talks about the 144,000. Okay. The 144,000 are in the earth. And then that sequence of events re ends in Revelation 14 verse 5. And a new sequence begins in Revelation 14 verse 6. Which I already spoke about. Now, Revelation 14 6, the rapture we see happens in 1414 through 1420. And if you read Revelation chapter 15, we see a great multitude anyway. So, I think I'm done with making this video. I've covered as much as I can. Okay. This is the right interpretation. I'm setting the record straight as far as the way things are going to happen. It's all going to happen exactly as I just said because it's directly right. It's the right interpretation, interpretation from God's word. Okay. And if it sounds boastful that I say that I'm the Elijah, I'm not the one who said that. It's been prophesied over me probably a dozen times that I have the spirit of Elijah. I'm the Elijah. I walk into a church one day and the guy stops and says, Elijah's here. <laughs> I was the only person walking in right then. <laughs> and that's not that's just that's just one or two prophecies right there. There's been a lot. Okay. Um and, and if you look at the the attack of the devil, the attack of the enemy on my life, oh my god. <laughs> All right, God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Time's running out. You don't have to believe I'm the Elijah. I don't even believe it myself, but we'll find out, won't we?